Hi, this is Captain Steve Tarrant, and in this video we'll be uh, working through the solution to a free surface problem. So, uh, in this problem, uh, we are given uh, uh, this uh, information. This is the SS American Mariner. Uh, she's ready to bunker with the following drafts. After all bunkers are aboard, soundings indicate the tonnage is shown. Use the white page stability data reference book to determine the free surface correction. So we have to determine the free surface correction. Uh, to do that, we're going to use these. Uh, these are tanks on board the vessel, and these are quantities or tons of bunkers that we have taken on board. And in order to do this, we're going to need uh, some of the, uh, um, the the pages from the white pages. Okay. Specifically, we're going to need this one right here, which you have been given. And uh, <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to solve this problem by adding up all the free surface moments. Free surface moments can also be called free surface constants. They can also be called I values. Okay, all those terms really mean the same thing. And the I values we're going to get from this table, from these two columns. We're either going to get an I for a slack tank, or we're going to get an I for a tank at 97%. Okay. Um, and uh, we're also going to need to calculate the total displacement of the vessel. Okay, so we're going to need to do that. Uh, that'd be the displacement of the vessel after we've bunkered. And then we'll be ready to solve the problem. The formula for calculating the uh, free surface correction is going to be I, which we calculate in step one, divided by displacement, which we calculate in step two. So that is the formula. Free surface correction equals I divide, little i divided by displacement. Uh, and uh, you know here it is, calculate free surface correction. It's the free surface constant, which is another way of saying little i divided by displacement. Okay, so let's do this. So our first tank is uh, this DV1. It's the center line tank, and it's bunkered to 48.2 tons. We have 48.2 tons in it after we sounded it. So what we'll do here is we'll come over here, we'll find DV1, and we'll slide over to this tank capacity column. And now we'll look at this. Now we have fuel oil, not salt water. Okay. Uh, we're putting fuel oil in this tank, so we're going to use this fuel oil tons. And it turns out that 48.2 tons in that tank, oh, we filled it up to 97%. You don't really want to fill your fuel tanks more than 97% because if the fuel expands due to heat, uh, it could you could have an overflow. So that 97% is a safe level. So uh, that is almost full, but not quite full, which means we're going to have a little bit of free surface in there. And the free surface constant for that tank is, we're going to pluck it. Oh, where's my cursor? Here it is. Uh, uh, if this tank is at 97%, we're going to come to the 97% column for free surface correction, and we're going to extract this, this number here. This 67 represents a moment, okay? 67 foot tons, which is the moment of having that tank slack, okay? So we're going to do that again for here. DB1A is 81.9. DB1A, 81.9 is it's yeah, that's at 97% too. So we'll come over here and we'll get our I from 97%. And we're going to do that for every one of these tanks. So it's a bit laborious, but uh, it's what you'll need to do. By the way, these numbers represent tons. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to end up having all of these values. These are the, 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 all of the I values for each tank. All right. And you'll notice there's some little gaps here. For instance, I didn't choose anything here for DB5, port or starboard. Well, that's because DB5, there was no information for port or starboard. It was just for the centerline tank. The reason is, is that when we went to sound it, there wasn't anything in them. We didn't put any bunkers in those tanks. The thing you also notice that's interesting here is that, uh, oh, we were using this column, but for some reason or other, DB, DB7, DT1, and DT1A, we went to this column. Well, that's why was that? DB7, port, 66.2. DB7, port, oh, you know, 97%, that would be at 94.6 tons, but I only have 66.2 tons, which means I have... I have, I'm slack, okay? Well, if I'm slack, I'm going to get my I va uh, value from the slack column. That's why 
I switched from here to here, okay? Because 66.2 is less than 97%, which means it's slack. Now that I have decided all of the I values that I'm going to need, I'm going to add them up, okay? So uh, I add them up down here. These added up are 2615. I add up all these. That's 7748. I skip these two because I didn't have any information about them. I skipped those two because there was no information. I assume that they are empty. And what I get is a total uh, I value, okay, of 1,363. Now, this I value is really a moment. It's in foot tons, okay? Well, uh, I could have done this another way, all right? Uh, I could have noted, uh, I could have taken each one of these numbers and put them over here. So 48.2, 67, I could have written it down. Uh, my preference personally is to take a, a number two pencil or some kind of soft pencil. And as I get the, the I value, I just circle it. Okay. I just circle it as I go down. Um, and then I just add these numbers. The reason is, is because I know from personal experience that if I take 67 and then I write it over here, sometimes I'm going to write 76. Okay. I'll make some transposition errors. So I just circle them using a soft pencil so that I can erase it and then use this page for another problem in the future. But anyway, you can do what you want. You're going to have to do one or the other. Circle them or write them down over here. All right. Uh, so 1063, that's the sum of the uh, I values. If I wrote them down over here, I'd have to do that as well. Okay. So uh, now we've done step one. Step two, calculate the total displacement. Well, at the beginning of the problem, the vessel had these drafts, so it was already displacing water. And then we bunkered all of these tonnages. So I'm going to have to go, oh, okay, what am I going to have to do here? I've got to add up all of these tonnages, okay? And the displacement due to adding the bunkers is 2,980.7. Now, I have to add that to the displacement from the, the ship at the beginning of the problem. Well, it turns out that 2104, 2604, the mean draft is 2310. So I go into my table here, and I find uh, 2310, which is about right here. And lo and behold, the uh, draft is around 16220. So my total displacement is 19200.1 tons. So now I have solved part two. Now I do step three. Step three is to take the total of the I values, 10363, and divide it by the total displacement after bunkers, which is 192007. Okay. By the way, this calculate free surface correction okay, is the same thing as saying the free surface constant divided by displacement. That's the formula in words, which is represented by the formula with these symbols, I free surface constant, displacement, displacement. So the free surface correction equals I divided by displacement. That is 10.363 divided by 19.2007, which equals 0.54. What does that 0.54 represent? That is a correction that I'm going to have to apply to my center of gravity, OK? Basically, my center of gravity is 0.54 feet higher okay, than what I calculated it to be using like the theory of moments. And this 0.54 feet is a virtual rise in the center of gravity, which is due to these tanks not being 100% full and that center of gravity inside those tanks being able to shift. What would be the next logical step in this problem? Well, the next logical step in this problem would be to figure out, hey, what effect would this have on my GM? Well, if my center of gravity is 0.54 feet higher than what I calculated in the theory of moments, then it would be logical to assume that my GM would be decreased. And so my GM would be decreased by 0.54 feet. And so the next logical step would be to figure out what my overall GM was of the vessel. Okay? And that is how you do problem one. Uh, uh, or, or pro how do you do this particular kind of problem. And uh, there'll be another video showing other free surface problems.